I started putting on dresses when I was four years old. And for me, I didn't realize it was drag. I didn't realize it was queer. Those were just the types of characters that I wanted to play at, whatever that means. And I think it means different things for different people. For me, I was drawn to witches and evil women from film and books because I liked that combination of strength and glamour and also like absolutely not taking shit from anyone. So it was Lady Macbeth, it was the Wicked Witch of the West, my childhood had high and low and everything in between. Um, and I, I would really develop those characters in my mind and my imagination through play. And then I never stopped, I just wasn't quite sure how, I didn't see it as art, I thought, saw it as some kind of like fashion dress up game. And I think learning more about the history of drag really showed me that that's what I had been doing the entire time. Sasha Velour totally evolved. I'm trying to think where she started. It was like old Hollywood. <laughs> I think everyone wants to be in old Hollywood. It's just, <laughs> it's what we are told as little kids is like the epitome of femme elegance. And of course I wanted that for myself. And then I started mixing that old Hollywood glamour with other ideas that I had had along the way of my life. I didn't really start doing drag until I was 25 or 26. And at that point I had already, I had already, I had had my Hollywood glamour moment. I had had my mask for mask moment. I had had my like, I'm a pretentious intellectual moment. I had had my like, I'm a gender monster, I'm an alien creature of the night and I'm a fucking mess. And I had rejected all of those and then I got to like bring them all back and combine them into this character of Sasha Velour who's like butch and a professor and a monster and a starlet. <laughs> Drag should be a space where queer, identifying, non-binary people feel represented and uplifted. Well, let me tell you, dear friends, you have arrived at exactly that kind of drag space. Outside, in the waking world, actual Death Eaters have taken over positions of power. But here, in our necessary dream world, we are living a utopian dream where we get to be in charge, where me and you and you and you are all in charge and we get to practice laying out the world as we see it, the world as it should be, and the world as it works better. <laughs> For me, gender, gender is a story and it's a language that, um, that we have to speak in some way in order to be understood by other people out in the world. But it's also like it has some connection with our bodies and how we ultimately want to interpret them and what kind of stories we want to tell about them. And so like being a real living person is all about, for me, has always been about negotiating between how I see myself and how I interpret my own body and also how I can present it in ways that are familiar and ultimately likable to others because we want to be able to connect with people and so we have to be understood. With drag, you have an opportunity to literally perform it on the stage, to take it out of the realm of the realistic and make it something extravagant and glorious and even alien and ugly and fantastic if you want it to be. <laughs> when I think about curating an ideal drag show, it has, to, it has to capture a wide range of different types of drag. I feel like if we're all we see is one type of drag, then we can't even begin to get the full picture of what it is as an art. Like I wanna have drag kings, I wanna have 
cisgender women who perform femme drag. I want to have non-binary queens and like performance artists who see themselves aligned with drag even, but maybe don't necessarily identify that way. And I think when you have an evening like that, you get so many different ideas and stories about what gender is. It's so much more inspiring than just a bunch of flawless, sickening, glamour creatures, which is amazing too. Um, but so that's what I want to go for with, with my show, with Nightgowns. For me, I think I want my representations of femininity to be feminist and to be queer positive, um, to showcase strength and intelligence. I, I don't focus on, I actively avoid telling stories about femininity that are about pleasing men, because like almost all songs with women's voices singing them have, are about men to some extent. And so when that's the song I want to work with, I like work really hard to change the meaning through my performance. So it's about something different. So it's about murdering a man or <laughs> destroying the patriarchy or, or, or my relationship with myself, my relationship with my mom, my relationship with the community. I like to not focus on love. <laughs> um, because for me, the love that we need to be talking about in drag shows is about the LGBT community and how to make us stronger and how to make us intersectional. I am going to ask you all to join me in a Valyrian righteous scream <laughs> to separate that pain from your bodies and for yourself to enjoy a night of fabulous drag. So will you please join me on the count of three with a giant scream, each and every one of you. Don't hold back. This is not the time for holding that. One, two, three.